Welcome to Slash Forward. In this episode, we'll be looking at the 1998 film, The Faculty. Let's get to it. We open on some classic sporting scenes. Meatheads, pressure, yelling and aggression. After practice, the coach is busy showing the sprinkler system who's boss, when he has mysterious confrontation with an unknown character. We then transition to the teacher's lounge, where everyone has the pleasure of learning by how much their favorite programs will be cut for the benefit of the football team. This is, after all, a football town. The group begins the depressing walk to the parking lot, but Ms. Drake forgot her keys. She's confronted in her office by the coach, who offers to show her a magic trick. Concerned about what this wizard may do next, she runs off, but finds the door is secured with log chains. So, she doubles back for her keys and heads to the front door, where she makes it out just in time to be betrayed by Mrs. Olsen. The next morning starts off normal enough, with reckless driving, drugs, sexy dudes, basically everything teens like. We then meet our cast of misfits, comprised of dweebs, losers, jocks, preps, and newbies. The entire high school spectrum. Different now, but I feel they may soon find their variable social statuses leveling off under the threat of a common enemy. Once the kids get their violence out of their systems, the day gets underway. We find Casey spending his lunch in the bleachers, trying to keep a low profile in order to survive. On his way back, he finds an oddity on the football field, but is quickly run off by the coach. He brings his little treasure to science class, where Mr. Furlong puts it under the scope and suggests it may be a new species. When it gets doused with water, it revives itself, and they all bask in its majesty as it prances about the fish tank, peacocking like a boss. At swim class, star quarterback Stan tells the coach that he's quitting the team to focus on his academics, and the coach is uncharacteristically supportive. Confused but relieved, he hits the showers, flexing them delts, and has a disturbing interaction with Mrs. Brummel, who's desperate for a hug. This is passed off as an unfortunate side effect of her cancer medication. As school lets out, Delilah is fishing for a big story for the front page of the school paper, so she and Casey begin snooping around the teacher's lounge. Their investigation is interrupted by visitors. They witness an odd interaction that culminates in what appears to be an assault on Nurse Harper. In their panic, they also stumble upon Mrs. Brummel's corpse, which alerts the others to their presence. However, they are able to push past and escape. Casey returns with the police, but the scene's been cleaned and a plausible explanation is provided. Nurse Harper is epileptic. She's prone to ground balls. She had an attack. And, when Ms. Drake converts one of the officers in her office, Casey realizes he's basically on his own. At home, he is punished severely, losing all his privileges, including his porno. Aw, Mom. Yeah, boy, he's got a squirt. This lockdown also ensures his return to school the next day. When he gets there, he meets up with Delilah. They notice people acting strange at school and don't know who to trust. Her intent is to start by enlisting the help of her boyfriend, Stan, who, along with classmate Stokely, also noticed some odd happenings at the school, like mandated ear exams for students and faculty with police presence. Delilah and Casey find them and take them on as confidants. Outside, Zeke and Mary Beth are getting to know each other when Zeke, a student of human nature, also begins to notice unusual behavior all around. This is punctuated by a confrontation with Miss Burke, appearing decidedly less bookish than normal and acting unnaturally aggressive. I'll be sucking my toes till graduation. Miss Burke? Casey and Stokely lead the group to Mr. Furlong's classroom to revisit the specimen, but it's gone. They reveal their working theory that body snatcher style aliens are taking over their town, just in time to get goofed on by Zeke, who is restocking his drug lab paraphernalia in the adjacent room. When Mr. Furlong arrives, Zeke jokes around with him about their silly conspiracy theory, but Mr. Furlong gets serious. This prompts Zeke to create a makeshift machete and remove a few digits before eye gouging him with some pixie dust. They find the powder creates an extreme, negative reaction inside our moisture-rich alien friends. They then calmly navigate the halls, beelining for the parking lot, and arriving at Zeke's house where we learn our boys got a variety of hobbies and interests. Here they confirm the parasite-host relationship between the alien slugs and the townsfolk, and that the diuretic properties of his caffeine-based nose candy are intolerable to them. With nothing more to go on but common knowledge, they assume finding and killing the queen will return everyone to normal. But first, First, a training day scenario, as they all have to get crunk to prove they're untainted. This reduces their group by one, as Delilah reveals herself to have worms before trashing the lab and cutting out. They take the remaining supply and head to the homecoming game, where the whole town is congregating to watch their local boys dominate and convert the opposition. This is also the part of the movie where Ursher gets to play his dream role, playing it being a hard ass. They head to the gym where they're immediately confronted by Ms. Drake, who they had assumed to be the queen. Zeke is confident enough to aerate her forehead, and then Mary Beth gets a little overzealous, using most of the stash to kill her. When Stan goes to check on the others, there are strong indicators that their plan was unsuccessful. This is confirmed for the rest when they're smart enough not to let Stan in until he takes 
the test. Unfortunately, he uses up the last of the scat they had on hand, hoping to find a few errant doses still in his car as Zeke and Casey go out to acquire it. Casey provides a distraction, narrowly keeping ahead of the mob, while Zeke gets to his car and finds a few hits on the floorboard. But before he can get back, he has to deal with Miss Burke, and opts for the now standard move of intentionally wrecking his car. Back at the gym, during casual conversation, Mary Beth takes an oddly pro-pod people stance, outing herself as the queen. She chases them to the locker room, and Zeke arrives in the midst of a confusing situation, in which the girls are fingering each other with no obvious way to determine who is the alien. Why are you naked? We see that Mary Beth cheated the test, making us all look like fools in the process, and that she got to Stokely in the locker room. Stokely is quickly caged, and our queen makes quick work of Zeke. Casey then lures her out with his sweet, soft, water-filled body, so welcoming and cozy, and leads this big bitch through the retracting bleachers. He makes it out just in time to pin her, providing an easy target for some scat. And this time, confirmation comes instantly as these slugs she sneezed into his face wither. One month later, we find investigations ongoing, in a world gone mad with jocks dating losers, and dweebs kicking it with fat hot. And that was The Faculty, a film so rich in plot it was hard to fit most of it in here. If you haven't seen it, it's very much worth watching. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love for you to become a part of the channel by subscribing. Thanks for watching.